Hello YouTubers, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I would like to talk to you about the second part of the full frame and the APS-C discussion and that would be the depth of field difference between the APS-C size and the full frame sensor. Now if you didn't see the, the first video, you have to look up in my channel, you know it was about the light gathering differences between APS-C and the full frame sensor. And I actually made some tests with an APS-C size camera and the 1 slash 2.3 inch sensor camera which is really small and uh, you can see the result of the test in that video. Now in that video I didn't discuss about the, the depth of field because the video would have been too long so that's why I did this separate video about the depth of field. Now let's see again what's the difference between a full frame and APS-C size sensor. Oh, this is a very controversial subject, I tell you, because many photographers will uh, will argue and say that um, full frame sensor has 1.5 times the depth of field difference. You know, the 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 size of the depth of field. Let's say uh, depth of field is if you don't know about depth of field, you have to you have to search up and look a video that is actually the uh, the 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 area which is in focus in the photo now the truth is that the APS-C size sensors crop factor is 1.5 that's absolutely true and the depth of field is 1.5 times larger on the APS-C size sensor that is also true but that comes only in certain situation and here is the controversy and here some uh, many people will argue about this and and uh, but they don't explain you know neither of them so it is true in the situation when you want to frame the the the, the photo the same like you are on a full frame and what i mean by this the example you make a portrait and you do the portrait from head till here yeah and you have this this imagine this this uh, this photo over here you know how i sit now you can see over here the uh, the the sizes you know and if you take this photo with a full frame camera and at f2.8 let's say and then you take you want to take the same photo but you want to have the same framing like in this photo with an aps-c size camera because the aps-c size sensor is smaller the image actually will be cropped in so what you will have to do you will have to go further back down to get the same framing like with the full frame and that causes the depth of field difference because if you stay over there like i tell you an example if you take a full frame camera you put on a tripod and make a photo and then you take an APS-C size camera put on the same tripod don't move the tripod don't move the subject and do the photo the depth of field will be the same. The only difference will be that the photo will be with the APS-C size sensor much more cropped in, much more tight, because the sensor is actually smaller and it's actually a cropped photo of the full frame. Now, if you step back and you go back to, to achieve the same framing, that's when the depth of field will get modified because the distance between the subject and the camera will be distant, different. Now, if you increase the difference between the subject and the camera, the depth of field will be wider. If you decrease the distance, the depth of field will be shallower, 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 shallower. That's why you can see on the, on the macro photos that the depth of field is just the hair is just millimeters one millimeter or two millimeter because the the camera is very very close to the subject and that's why you have to increase the f-stop to f20 or f18 or f16 when you do macro shots that's why macro lenses have the the f-stops up until f32 in some situations because you need that because the subject is very very close to the lens to the camera to the sensor so like I said, if you think that full frame is different than the APS-C, it's true. If you think that it's not the, if you think that there's difference, it's true. If you think that there is no difference, it's also true, because it all depends on the situation. Because if you don't move the camera and the subject, there is no difference. If you move the camera further down to get the same. Um, uh, framing you know the same frame like with full frame cameras 
then it's obviously a difference. It's 1.5 times different. And uh, that means, the example, that if you have with f1.4 on, on a full frame camera, you have 5 cm depth of field, you will have 7.5 cm with the um, APS-C. Because the 5 cm what you have, you will have to multiply with 1.5. That is the crop factor. Now, if you use a smaller camera, like a micro four thirds, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> if you use a smaller camera, like a micro four thirds, which is uh, the crop factor is two times. Now, obviously, then you have to multiply that with two. So if you have five centimeter with a full frame camera, you will have 10 centimeter with the uh, micro four thirds. But that, again, in the case when you will have to go further down to achieve the same framing like with a full frame camera. If you stay the same position, the same, just you just have a tighter shot, the depth of field will be the same. There is no difference at all then. Now, that's the reason that I'm uh, kind of like, well, I, I can't say I'm pessimistic, but it's kind of like I don't really see micro four thirds cameras really useful in portrait photography. That is the reason because when we speak about APS-C size cameras and full frame, the difference is uh, 1.5 times. So if you have a one stop faster lens on the APS-C size camera, that will kind of like uh, balance up the difference between the full frame and the APS-C. So if you have on full frame an f1.8 lens, let's call it, and if you have on the on the AP uh, on the APS-C, if you have a f1.4 or f1.2 lens, that will balance up the depth of field, like on the full frame. So I like to use very fast lenses on APS-C because then I can have that full frame look in my portraits. Is that possible with micro four thirds? Not really, because then you will, you should have used like 0 0.7 or 0 0.6 uh, aperture lenses, which doesn't exist at all at the moment. The fastest lens which exists on the planet at the moment is 0 0.95 for, uh, for micro four thirds and for APS-C. But if I put on the, on the APS-C the 0 0.95 lens, that will be like a 1.4-ish kind of on the full frame. Now, honestly, the second reason why I like APS-C and uh, I don't really bother getting into full frame because many people will say, yes, an F1.2 lens on the APS-C will be only an F1.8 lens on the full frame. Fair enough, and it's true, but in the same time, let's not forget that I used to have the Sony A7R full frame, the Sony A7 Mark II full frame, the D750 uh, from Nikon full frame, and I never liked to use f1.4 lenses wide open. All the time where I did the f1.4 lenses, I stopped down the f1.8 or f2. Why? Because, and that's only my personal preference, it's not a law, but my personal preference is that when I make a portrait, I want to see both eyes in focus. Now, if you have f1.4 on a full frame camera, when the subject is a little bit turned on the side, it's not completely straight looking at the camera, it's just like that. This eye will be in focus and this eye will be out of focus. I don't like that. So that's the reason I was always shooting at f1.8 because I want to see the whole face in focus. Now, I don't want to go further down than f1.8 with this. Obviously, if it's necessary, if you are in low light and it's handy to have f1.4 and you go down there, that's obvious. But in the same time, you cannot light. And how many times will that happen? Very, very rarely. So that's why I started to use APS-C size cameras, because I saw that the f1.2 or f1.4 on APS-C size camera, it's, it's like f1.8, f2 on a full frame. And that's brilliant. I love it. So, you can do this uh, yourself, test at home if you have other cameras, or if not, you can look up and you will see that I'm absolutely right. So, uh, when, when we come again, uh, back again to the, to the discussion that is there a difference between APS-C and full frame? Yes, there is, and no, it isn't. It depends on the situation. 
So I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. I hope that you liked it. If you want to add something to this video, something constructive, feel free and leave a comment down below. If you think that I was wrong in something, no problem. Please feel free and leave a comment down below in a polite manner, please. I don't want to have uh, bad language and, and uh, bad arguments on this channel because there's no point for it, you know. So other than that, I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.